Arginine is the most basic of the amino acids. So what does this mean? Well, functionally, it means that it is pretty, practically always positively charged. Um, it's positively charged because it's acted as a base, taking a proton. Protons are positively charged. When it takes a protein, it, proton, it gets positively charged. And the positive charge is stabilized throughout these nitrogens this in this guanidino group. Um, and so because you have this like resonant stabilization where this charge is shared by all of them, then it's really happy. And so it wants to be like in this positively charged state. Um, so it's really happy like that. And so it's almost always going to be like that. Um, but what, if, what do we mean by basic when it comes to amino acids? So today I want to review the basic amino acids and really talk about how you can look at the pH versus the pKa in order to like predict what protonation state something will be in and to compare the pKa's of different um, acids and different bases and why sometimes it's confusing to talk about bases because we're talking in terms of their conjugate acid strength. It can be confusing when we're talking about basic and acidic amino acids um, because we typically talk about things in terms of the acid. Um, so much more on pH and, P, um, and other posts, I'm not really gonna go into it much here, but basically a pH is the measure of your proton um, availability and it's an inverse log. So it means that the more protons you have, the more acidic you are, the lower the pH, the fewer protons you have, the more basic or alkaline you are, the higher the pH. And because it's a log 10, for every one pH difference, there's a tenfold um, difference between like protons, proton availability. So if you go one pH higher, you have 10 times less proton available. So it's a kind of deceptive scale um, because you're like, oh, it's just like one difference, but it can, it's a big difference in proton concentration, a tenfold difference. And it's also gonna be a tenfold difference in the amount of the protonated or deprotonated as we'll see. But we need to talk, mention this pH because the pH is going to, um, the pH is what we're going to be comparing that we're going to be comparing like basicity or acidity based on the value called the pKa, which is the pH at which half of it is going to be protonated and half of it is going to be deprotonated. So an acid is something that can donate a proton and a base is something that accepts a proton. We're just gonna talk about in these terms, there's another definition of acid and bases that involves like electrons and stuff. We're not gonna go there. We're just gonna stick with this definition for today. Um, but so we're talking about an acid, something that donates and the base is something that um, takes. And so it's important to know that when we're talking about this, for the, there's a flip side of every acid is a conjugate base and the flip side of every base is a conjugate acid. So when you have an acid form, it can give a proton. So an acid is something that can give a proton. But once it gives a proton, now it doesn't have a proton to give. So instead, it's a conjugate base, so it can take a proton. And so you can imagine that if you have a really strong brace, a strong acid, something that really wants to give up a proton, it's not gonna to wanna to take that proton back. And so you're going to have a weaker conjugate base, whereas something that is a strong base, it's really gonna to wanna to, to take a proton. And then when it takes a proton, now it's its conjugate acid, and it's not gonna give it up. You wanna give, it's not gonna to wanna to give it up, so it'd be a weak acid. And so by talking in terms of the acid strength, we can also talk, be talking about a base's strength, um, but we're going to compare in terms in this pKa value, which is in terms of the, which is talking about like the acid or the conjugate acid strength. But remember that if you have a strong acid, you have a weak conjugate base. And if you have a weak acid, you have a strong conjugate base. So when we look at a pKa value, a lower value is going to mean that we have a stronger acid and therefore we have a weaker conjugate base. So if we're wanting to see like is something a better base, we would want something that has a higher pKa um, because this would mean it was a weaker acid um, and thus a stronger conjugate base. Um, so what is this pKa value though? So the, at the pKa, half of the copy, this is a pKa is a measure of, it's the pH at which half are in the conjugate acid form and half are in the conjugate base form. And so remember that when we're going like changing a unit in pH, we're getting 
like tenfold um, difference in the proton availability. If you have something that's a really, really strong um, acid, it's really, it's not gonna want to take a proton until there's like a really, really a lot. That's why I like to think of it as kind of like a proton jar. So a strong, a strong acids, it's not gonna want to take a proton. And so if it, but if there's a ton, a ton of protons around, it just can't, it can't resist. Like every time, everywhere it turns is a proton, it kind of, um, but if you have a, um, Conversely, if you have a strong base, it's going to want to take a proton, even if they're not very many available. And so basically how greedy they are is kind of what we're looking at in terms of the pKa. And we can compare the pKa's of different um, compounds, like different amino acid side chains, in order to get information about their relative basicity or acidity. So you can see that if something is a stronger base, it's going to have a higher pKa. So we're like drawing the line at a different place. So we can think about the pKa as telling us like where we draw the 50-50 line between having a um, the amount of the conjugate acid um, and the conjugate base. So at the pKa, you're going to have a 50-50 mix. If you have a stronger acid, you're going to have a lower pKa, and if you have a weaker acid and therefore a stronger base, you're going to have a higher pKa. And so if you're looking at the pH of like in your body or something where you're at like a pH of around 7.4, it's all in comparison. And so you want to look and you'll see like, so if this is the pH we're looking at, well then if we have um, a strong, if we have this strong acid and then we go and we look at it, well, we're on the right side, we're on um, the right side of this pKa. And so this means that we're going to be predominantly in the deprotonated form, the conjugate base form. Whereas if we look over here and we have a, um, where we have a weaker acid or a more a stronger base, therefore, well, now we're on the left side of that. And so if we're on the left side, we're going to have more of the conjugate acid form. And so it's going to be um, the protonated form. And we can see this if we look at the amino acids, we can see that if we're at a pH of around 7.4, histidine is going to be to the left of that. So it's mostly going to be deprotonated. Um, and when it's deprotonated, it's neutral. But lysine and arginine, they're going to be on the right of that line. And when they're on the right of the line, they're in their, um, when they're on the right of the line, they're in their protonated form and they are positively charged. And so we can, if we were to look at a different pH, we would see there would be a difference. But when we're talking, um, and so that's how, but for our purposes, it doesn't matter as much that these differences are there, except when we're talking about like enzymes using them and like that sort of thing. Um, so this does have, this does have consequences that there are these differences. Um, but if we were to go and look inside a cell, we'd find these mostly in their positive form because they are, we are always looking basically to the left of the PKA. So in the conditions where there are more protons available than they need in order to be like um, mostly protonated. So we can even look to the, we can look at the PKA relative to the pH in order to like predict the protonation state. So we've been talking in like relative terms, but we can actually put numbers to it. Um, so the pKa is going to tell us the pH at which we're drawing that 50-50 line. Uh, but if you go away from that line, you're quickly going to see one form dominate over the other. And so if we go to the right of the line, so if we go up in pH, we have less per, fewer protons available, more basic conditions. We're going to expect to get more of the conjugate base form. How much more? For every one difference in pKa um, above, above the p for every one difference in pH above the pKa, you're going to have um, 10 times more of the conjugate um, base. So only about 9.1% of it is going to be protonated if you're one above the pKa. Two above, you have 100 times more. Three above, 1,000 times more. Four above, 10,000 times more. If you go to the left of the pKa, so if you go one, one pH lower, you're going to have 10 times more protonated. Two pH, two pH units lower, you're gonna have 100 times more protonated. Three, 1,000, four, 10,000. And so if you look 
if we look at our basic amino acids with when we're talking about like arginine we're above like five or so pk on um, ph units above it so we're talking like 10 to the fifth we're talking like 100,000 times um more of the protonated compared to the non-protonated with lysine we're still about a thousand times more we're looking at histidine now we're on the right of the line um and so we're above the PK, so we have about like nine, eight to nine percent of it is going to be protonated. And so histidine is more willy nilly and it can go kind of either way in our body, which is really cool. But you can see like with lysine and arginine, you're so far from the P PKA that it's harder to um, deprotonate it. Um, although it can happen, like especially with the help of enzymes kind of like helping um, things out. Um, so that's, we can use this pH versus pKa um, for anything. Like it doesn't have to just be like an amino acid. Um, it doesn't just have to be a basic amino acid. We, we'll see how we can use it with the acidic ones as well. Um, but it doesn't have to be an amino acid at all. But since this is 20 days of amino acids, um, let's talk a little more about why these have these various pKa's. Um, so we'll start with histidine. Um, so histidine, it has a cimetazole ring. The cimetazole ring is resonance stabilized. Um, so basically it has this like electron sharing um, throughout this ring and it's kind of like electron, you can think of it as kind of like electron withdrawing. So it's kind of like pulling, um, pulling the electrons away from the shared hydrogen, making this hydrogen um, more prone to leaving. Like it doesn't really, it's not feeling the love as much. Um, so it has a lower pKa than the other ones that we will see. But it's important that with hydro, with um, when we're talking about histidine, deprotonation is not going to mess up that aromaticity. Um, so when it and when it's charged, it can have this charge be involved. Like the um, this charge is like resonance and it's stabilized, so it's kind of stabilized between the nitrogens. And we'll see with um, that arginine takes us like to the extreme, um, but it's not like as much here as with um, the arginine. But either case, you're not doing anything to mess with the aromaticity of these compounds. So this hydrogen can come and go. When we're talking about um, lysine. Um, so lysine has this like primary amino group. With all of these, we have a nitrogen that's going to be taking giving and taking the proton. And so nitrogen is like um, nucleophilic. So it likes to seek out a nucleophile to share some, um, to give it some proton love to um, complement. It's kind of like overwhelmed with electrons. Um, and so basically we can have, we, we saw a lot how lysine attacks as like a nucleophile. So it like adds on to something, but it can also, instead of just like bonding to something, bonding to a thing um, in order to like share some electrons, it can actually just take a proton directly. And so we talk about nucleophiles as being the nucleus is where the protons are, which is where the positive stuff is, which is what they're looking, a nucleophile is looking for. And so if it, it can just take a proton directly and then we call it acting as a base instead of like acting as a nucleophile. Although acting as like a base and taking a proton is basically just a version of acting as a nucleophile. But anyway, so this nitrogen is, that's why we see nitrogen being like taking the, um, the protons. But when it takes the protons, um, now it's like, well, now I'm positively charged. Like I went from one extreme to the other. Um, I went from having too many electrons. Well, when it was, it was neutral, but it still had, um, it had like a lone pair of electrons. And so it had more than it wanted, basically. Um, so I was looking for some help to share it with. And so once it shares it, it gets this proton now it has this positive charge. Atoms like don't really like having a positive charge, especially when they can't, um, share it with others. So lysine is going to be less, um, it's going to be less basic than, than arginine, but it's still going to be more basic than histidine. Um, and so, cause histidine, remember you have, this is actually like, this is like electron withdrawing and stuff. And so this hydrogen is less tightly held um, than you have with the lysine. Um, and so lysine, although it's a positive charge and, you know, it, we prefer like things all else being even, not having a positive charge, 
it's still, um, it has this higher pKa because it would rather have some help sharing um, those extra electrons with rather than having them just like hang out. So when we talk about arginine, now we're talking. So here you have, when it's positive, when it is protonated, you actually have this like resonance throughout like this whole, like we call, this is a guanidium ion. Um, and these nitrogens are going to like share this charge. So we can represent this kind of like this. We can actually like draw this with like these resonance um, structures where we can see that we can basically like push the electrons around and stuff and draw it. So you can see that you could draw it so that there's a double bond with like any of these. So this is going to be resonance stabilized and it likes being resonance stabilized. So now it's really happy to be positive um, because it got those like, um, it got to take a proton, um, which gave it some help with sharing that extra electron burden. Um, and it can, ship spread out that charge um and so it doesn't mind it as much and so arginine is the basicity queen um and so then when we look at the pkas this is bearing it out with it has a very high pka but remember you can look you can compare the ph versus the pka of anything so we could even do it with the end um the end termini of amino acids. Um, and so we're going to see like this, the carboxylic acid group has a low pH, so it's a strong acid, whereas the um, amino group has a high pH, so it is a base. It's a weaker acid, and so it's a stronger base. And so this is why we commonly see amino acids in the Zwitter ionic form, where they have a, a protonated amino group and a deprotonated carboxylic acid group, so a carboxylic group. Um, and more on that in another post. Um, but yeah, so you can compare the pH and the pKa of various um, things to predict what protonation state they're likely to be in. And I hope this helps you understand.